Look at verse number five. The Bible says, And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. And people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash, eastward from beth -Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed. Then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. So, also remember, having a king is new for Israel. Right? They're not new as a people or as a nation, but having a king is new for them. The people are confronted with a massive army way outnumbering them. And the people freak out and they get scared. Right? So, it's the, I mean, they start hiding anywhere they can. They're like, we're going we're gonna to hide out. You know, there's a cave over here. We're going to hide up there. Hopefully they won't see it. You know, see me and then I can get through this or whatever. And Saul is like in charge of this group of people who are super scared. Verse 7 says, And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. So he's still got some people following him, but they're scared. They're trembling, right? And he's supposed to be this leader. Verse 8 says, And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. So he waits seven days. That's what he was supposed to do. That's what he was instructed to do, to wait for Samuel. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So obviously over the course of this week, people are getting more and more scared. They're going, man, I don't want to face this. I don't want to do this. And, and they're starting to, to leave left and right. So this is a situation that Saul's in. Verse 9 says, And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. This is what Samuel was going to do. This is what, Sam, what he was waiting for Samuel to do. So he says, well, he said he's going to be here. He's not here. So I'm just going to take matters into my own hands and do this. Now, the big problem with this is that Saul was a Benjamite. He was not a Levite. It was not his job. It was, not, it was definitely not his job from God to be offering any burnt offerings or any sacrifices. See, in the Old Testament, people can, you couldn't just have anybody doing that work. God had isolated the the and sanctify the Levites to be the people who were going to do that service for him. They were people who were holy and separated to do that work. No one else was allowed to do that. But King Saul decided, well, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures, basically. So who cares ultimately what's right? We still need to offer the sacrifice to the Lord, so I might as well just do it. Samuel's not here. Verse 10, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. I mean, he just barely had enough time to even do the offering, and then there's Samuel. So, I mean, how late was he really? He waited the seven days. He was still coming that day because he had just made this, this sacrifice. He's a little bit late from the time appointed, but he still makes it there with plenty of time to have done the offering himself anyway, you know, for Samuel to have undone the offering he shows up uh, and says, and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. So it's all like, great, all right, Samuel's here, cool. But he doesn't think there's anything wrong. He doesn't even see a problem with what he had done. Verse 11, and Samuel said, what hast thou done? Samuel sees it right away. Hey, he's a big, what, are you, what have you done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, Therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. I had to force myself to do this. Right? I didn't really want to do this. I didn't really want to sin. I wanted to do everything right, but I just forced myself to do this, you know, in order to offer a burnt offering. Now, think about this, too, because, you know, I, I, as wicked as Saul was, and he was wicked, we need to see the wickedness for what it is and not get caught up in the same trap that Saul got caught in. What's he trying to do here? He's trying to offer something unto the Lord. Right? It's not like he's trying to serve another God. It's not like he's trying to just ignore, well, we don't need the Lord's blessing anyways. I'll just go off and win this battle. For, you know, he wasn't doing any of that. He was trying to do everything that he knew needed to be done and offer the sacrifice and he's just thinking, well, I mean, Samuel's not here, but we still need to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. I'll offer this sacrifice. 
I'll, I'll give of myself. I'll do something I know I shouldn't do, but it's all for the greater good. This is the mindset of King Saul. But the problem was it wasn't according to the word of the Lord. It was, he was breaking God's commandments in order to do that. Don't ever think that something that you're doing, oh, but I'm going to make the sacrifice, and I'm going to give, and I'm going to do this. If you're breaking God's command to do it, God will not be pleased at all. In fact, it's going to make God angry for you to circumvent the rules that God set up to do something that, that you think he's going to want. 